it takes a few uh, like a few seconds to start so i'll be notified the broadcast is live now mm, i know all right we are on great Assalamu alaikum and Ramzan Mubarak to all of my viewers. I am Raisa, your host for AFAC, Exchanging Ideas for a Change, brought to you by Beauty Global Affairs Council. Today, as we are ending the second day of our holy month of Ramadan, uh, we have brought a very unique guest on our table and on our show. Um, and it's none other than Mr. Salman Khan Pramod. He is a biotech graduate from Brack University. And right now, he's also serving as a lecturer at the same university. And we consider him a visionary, as he has found a very unique organization named Mecca Mind, who, which, uh, which causes, which actually brings to the table a fusion of science and as well as the democratization of science. So Mr. Salman, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, yeah, I'm doing really great right now. And I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to have you here. Yeah. All right, we are actually very honored to have you here as well. And so before we actually start the conversation, I would actually like to know, I think all of our viewers would also like to know about MegaMind. So if you could let us know what it does and everything. Yeah, sure. Um, well. It's basically it's a tech company, but uh, I would say we have this vision to uh, democratize science, and, and we are targeting specific um, community to teach uh, a sector of science. And also, uh, we're trying to bring together uh, education and economics, and also design of uh, why and everything, because um, things are uh, really getting. Um, out of the hand in this situation, as you can see. So we have to create a generation for the future who can be prepared for upcoming situation like pandemics or some other disasters maybe. So we can uh, tackle this only with science and also some of the steps we should um, bring together with design and uh, economic uh, development and strategies. So it's a platform where we are bringing Team S T E M that means science, technology, education, arts, and mathematics uh, to teach or train a specific community so that they can be, um, I mean, enforced with some of the knowledge and, and uh, their skills to have the knowledge and skill to tackle the situation later. So it's one part of that. All right. Thanks for letting us know what Make a Mind does. So let's dive into the questions and some of the discussions that we can do. So, you know, we understand, like, it has been years since we actually got a pandemic at this scale. Uh, and it's been causing a lot of problems around the world. And a lot of experts have said that we were not prepared for such a pandemic. But so according to you, what do you think? If there was going to be another pandemic such as this in the future, what could be the interventions, you know, to prevent or to, pre to prepare for a pandemic like COVID-19? Yeah, uh, well, this kind of question actually has uh, so many answers, but I would like to focus on a few, um, one or two maybe. So first of all, this is the era of science, technology, and data. And I would like to focus on data. So data science and uh, predictive analysis or predictive um, structures can have a very good role and very important role here because um, people are spreading, of course, people are spreading this virus to one person, uh, to another person, for, or maybe one country to another country. So it's basically the virus is uh, going with people and, uh, and in, in Korea, China and some of the other countries who has a very good data structure, uh, surveillance system and also tracking system, they actually track down some of the people who act, were a carrier who um, who actually brought, uh, brought some other people under this kind of infectious range and they um, actually track them down and got some preventive measure and in our country gaze technologies they have been working on surveillance and security um, tracking for a while 
and uh, they are actually proposing. They have proposed one 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 of the apps um, where they, they are trying to um, collaborate with government and uh, and check down some of the COVID patients if it's possible. Since we we need a very good infrastructure for that, uh, both hardware and software. But I think um, database and predictive analysis and software and hardware application and also mathematical modeling, uh, this could be a very efficient and very important tool to uh, predict and uh, take care of you know, the outbreak or pre predict the outbreak and have some proper measures or like uh, put some of the interventions uh, to make policies and push government to um, take steps to prevent or like have necessary um, what do you call it? it? It can be preventive measures. So yeah, um, I would like to focus on this data science and uh, the power of uh, software, uh, especially artificial intelligence and uh, uh, tracking softwares. All right. So you think that the inclusion of data science into the health sector might help us in the future to actually prepare for such pandemics, right? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm like um, kind of uh, sure. Uh, it's not might. It's uh, we actually need that. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think during this time, it is also. I mean, we should all acknowledge the fact that uh, our health sectors, especially in Bangladesh and even in many other states, even in the United States, the health sector wasn't enough to prepare for this, you know, immense scale of staggering number of deaths and you know the staggering number of people who actually got affected so you know what do you think like what could be the initiatives that could be taken in terms of healthcare facilities and healthcare policies in different states uh yeah well for first of the thing um, to tackle or to face any kind of disease or disaster like this you need to have a uh, proper um knowledge about the positive agent in this case it's a virus uh, but it's not very um, easy to get proper information uh, rapidly. It takes time, actually. You can uh, see all the flu or this kind of uh, pandemic events uh, for first uh, some of the de uh, decades, like or in, in last 100, 100, 100 or like thousand years. Actually, it every time it had a uh, very good number or like very. Um, significant number of casualties, but uh, since now we have these technologies, maybe uh, we can have the disease analysis with predictive major, uh, predictive analysis of disease. Because for any kind of treatment, you, you need to know uh, how the disease is causing, how this is going to affect the human health or human um, population. But uh, this is a very um, there are so many parts here because. A very new disease. Actually, the treatment process, the medication, it takes time, uh, like a very good amount of time, to come to the market or like to um, people. So here, uh, we have to. We, we can, what we can do is we can um, have some modeling or simulation. Uh, what kind of disease we can have? For example, viral. Uh, so we, we, we can isolate some of the emergency spaces that can be used for uh, affected patients, specifically for the pandemic disease, then training the paramedics. And we can have a set of paramedics like uh, our emergency firefighters uh, who can be always um, updated with knowledge or updated with uh, specific trainings and also uh, special training for the medical personnel and also for infectious disease. Because what you can see, uh, most of the pandemics, they are mostly like viral diseases. So infectious disease is a very good, uh, it's a very good example and a very important one because this is the cause um, that has been like, uh, that has been actually playing an important role in our economics uh, for a while. So special training for infectious disease and and a very specialized and uh, isolated uh, training measures can be taken for the medics and also general uh, general people. And general people, as in like in school, college, you can have a um, separate curriculum for that, or maybe a part of curriculum uh, to get ready for that, or at least general knowledge part. 
and also investment on medical supplies. Investment as in uh, since our um, technology, our uh, products line, things are like changing, they're shifting, they're shifting with different um, economic flows and also uh, situation like this. So we may have uh, expertise to create products like that, like uh, the products those are like really needed in this kind of situation. And we, we can have, we can convince or we can have investors to invest on medical supplies like that and, and uh, proper training to use those uh, medical devices. As you can, I can give an example. Nowadays, some of our peers, they have been running to different parts of the countries and they're train, uh, training doctors and medical personnel how to use RT-PCR and uh, some other molecular biology technique to detect the corona or COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, because in our uh, medical curriculum, actually uh, not all the medical curriculum contains this molecular training. So um, it's, very, it's really um, important to know um, to run and operate and have research uh, on this infectious disease if you are, if you are in medical uh, sector, or at least a part of medical sector should have um, this exposure to this kind of trainings. Um, so I think you know you, the initiatives that you suggested in order to actually prevent or prepare for these kind of uh, pandemics, like for example, you said more research and uh, you know increase in how we look at uh, medical uh, sectors in general. I would like to know, like for, for example, countries like Bangladesh who have very limited uh, you know, economic growth, or even I wouldn't exactly say limited economic growth, but I think we have a very limited budget when it comes to these things. And we might not have the resources or the people who can actually do something with these resources. We might lack that opportunity as well. So in that case, I mean, for economies like this, like Bangladesh and even the developing countries, how do you suggest we actually do these things that you're suggesting? Like, you know, all the initiatives that you talked about. Yeah, right. Uh, firstly, um, putting some of the curriculum into uh, your education system, uh, that not that actually doesn't require that much education, but uh, I mean um, economic uh, uh, sustainability or something, but uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of the choice by the policymakers. So we can skip that, but uh, the one you were talking about, that uh, medical supplies and investment and the issues about um, Factory, manufacturing cost and other things, and also the labor cost, and also their training them. It it, it might exactly. have a cost, right? Mm -hmm. So now uh, we have, how we are uh, how we are selling that uh, foreign I mean like labor uh, labors and and our garments. Those are kind of like putting foreign currency in our. Um, in our economy, right? For for a while, I mean, like more than a couple of decades, they're like keeping us uh, keeping us running and everything. But still, for this situation, uh, I think we we are we have to shift from this idea and from this uh, position because, as you can see, we have lost more than like two point one billion dollar orders mm -hmm. in garment sector, and many of the exactly. Uh, and many of our laborers, they are, they are pushed, they are forced to come come back. They are forced out of too. the employment, exactly. Yeah. So, so what for this uh, couple of years? Actually, we have to struggle um, because we have to create a new workforce so that we can sell it, like outsourcing it. Uh, it can be third party stuff. For example, we can focus on um, software. Software. It means um, right now. As you can see, we, are, we have been working from home. We have been focusing on so many uh, software-based development and initiatives and also products. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is a time to shift uh, from garment sector to some other things. For example, agricultural product, uh, software-based product. Um, maybe we can develop some of the um, medical supply equipment in our uh, local technologies. Um, the things uh, we can we can found here. I mean, it's a very uh, it's a very tricky stuff because uh, if you want to make one uh, device 
actually you have to source out many uh, part of this device from outside of the country, especially from China, mm. from India or uh, Europe or United States even. So that's the fundamental thing because it's, it's not possible right now. If I say we, we can source out all the, we can make uh, things in our country, it would be like very stretchy and very big a long shot. Uh, for now, um, we can focus on some of the uh, outsourcing it means when Chinese government or China or some of the countries when they will um, they will be forced out to um, some of the factories, um, Western countries, especially United States, they may shift uh, dependency from China to some other countries. We we can take a, take that chance, and uh, also uh, especially the new era is coming. For example, quantum computing is coming. And so new kind of like com com uh, computer language, uh, they will be there. So this is a very vacant ground. If our uh, students can take this ground and like learn uh, new languages, and we can actually like compete or like put our uh, put our uh, expertise on sale in the international market. And uh, it, it's always it's all, all about quality control. Uh, I mean like struggling and like uh, like uh, presenting ourselves. Uh, one of the best in this area. We need we need training. We need determination. We need to uh, teach ourselves. We need to create uh, uh, scopes for our country people so that they can be uh, trained in uh, this sort of things. And also, um, not only uh, specific medical supplies, also some of the other supplies for um, it can be home appliances. It can be. I mean, I mean to say, their Western countries are the. Uh, consumers, world, world consumers, they have a specific need of uh, certain products. And especially when you are leaving home, we have to figure out what kind of things can be needed in the near future. What, just think about uh, um, a world where you are trying to focus, uh, you are trying to make everything automated, you are trying to make uh, your um, home homework a little bit easier or like comfortable. Uh, what kind of comfort product you are going to, it's very sad to say about it, but Next few years, people will be investing on com comfort products. I mean, like they will make you, your life more easier. You you don't have to go outside. Um, this kind of thing. So we can uh, right, even um, gain the world. Sir, so, yeah. Mr. Salman, so I'll have to uh, you know cut you off a little bit here because I you know the thing about what you said that all these products that you're talking about and even you even mentioned that. For example, countries like Bangladesh, we, we are not producing a lot of the things. And, you know, even if we want to, we will have to get those supplies from either Europe or China or, you know, the countries who actually make these things. But, I mean, don't you think it's actually a little bit of, uh, could be a little utopian of an idea because uh, Bangladesh is not prepared to actually do things like this as of now. And, you know, might not, like the government might not be focusing on uh, things that you're talking about at, at the moment because we cannot afford uh, these things. Well, actually, I was talking about uh, future from five to ten years now, like uh, okay. starting uh, a specific generation to have skills on that, like start training them to like prepare them for the future. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's not possible for us to like have that infrastructure right now at this moment, especially right after this pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, so I think we could, uh, so if we talk about the pandemic right now again, so, you know, I mean, so there has been a shortage of PPE, PPE in our country as well. And even though when, if, even though if we are getting it from China or there are a lot of people who are actually making it by themselves, but at the same time, you know, I think pharmaceuticals industries are the most affected because they have a lot of demand right now because they have to create a lot of things at this moment to actually fulfill the demand that we have. Uh, due to the overwhelming number of patients. So in that case, like, do you think that some of the safety steps should be reduced right now because of the emergency situation? Uh, well, so safety, uh, right. Uh, safety steps. So it's, 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 it's a very, I mean, uh, actually what people are working on healthcare technologies and also we have to think of um, so many effects when you are going to, uh, for, we can take, um, we can talk about a drug or testing kit right now, as an example. Mm -hmm. um, so testing kit, that's another thing. You can use it without harming other people because you are taking out some of the samples from other people. But um, in that case, I think uh, the approval or the process of 
um, getting uh, reaching out people with uh, COVID-19 testing kit or these sort of things, it's all right. They can reduce, uh, I mean, like, uh, it can be easier, but if we want to talk about vaccine or if we want to talk about medication, this is a very sensitive issue. And as you can see, even not medication, some of the agents, like chemical agents, some of the very uh, uh, chemicals that we use regularly, those daily things can be very fatal, uh, if not regulated. So if a pharmaceutical company, they don't uh, regulate or they don't, uh, I mean like monitor this kind of, uh, these initiatives or this exposure or any sort of uh, experimental designs of drug, um, I think it's not the time to, uh, I mean, uh, make it easy for uh, people to get get the drug or medication. And you see, and practically speaking, uh, this is not actually possible uh, to just create a drug. So it, whenever you are, you are uh, asking uh, this question or bringing things light, uh, I think uh, for the sake of this emergency, um, pharmaceuticals or the government, they are actually pushing it through. I mean, like there is automatically this easier. Like it's kind of like a auto automated process. That it should be bigger. I, what I believe, uh, because some uh, you can see some of the other um, infections. The they ha their vaccines are not yet here. They they have been here for 30, 40 years. So it takes time. 20, 40, 70, even 70 years. Uh, some, uh, Ebola, um, MERS, and uh, SARS, and also HIV. Then um, they are still under research. So, but uh, what we are hopeful that. Uh, this COVID-19 vaccine will be the fastest vaccine in the market. So yeah, this is the the the, uh, the time restriction is already actually taken down. Uh, what I believe. All right. So um, so you know, because COVID-19 is such a, I think it came very suddenly uh, in all of our lives because you know it started. Uh, early like last year in china around november and december and then suddenly since january 2020 it's been spreading like a wildfire everywhere so you know there has been a lot of misinformation and a lot of information going on i mean i think our viewers know as well that you know you can find covid 19 information on youtube facebook even whatsapp right. messages right now but at the same time some of these informations might be correct and some of them are completely you know misinformations so what do you think, how much harm is actually being caused by these kind of misinformations? Like how, what are the, what is the extent that we're talking about? Uh, thank you so much. Actually, it's a very uh, well important question because people need to know. Number one, I would say um, uh, the people who are actually uh, in rural area or some of, the, um, some of the older generation, they are not getting the proper information because they can distinguish uh, from the proper and uh, what they're seeing in social mm -hmm. media. So I would like to tar uh, target those uh, generation because uh, I believe uh, the people who are studying right now or the educated one, they can actually distinguish. So uh, number one, uh, well, we have had our talk about ethanol, vapor, food. Your, uh, like the internet went things, a right? little uh, problematic. Yeah, but I think, uh, other people, the people who actually have idea about it, they have taken it down and they, they actually help uh, all the generation and the, all the network of our uh, nation to, um, they, they actually take uh, handle it pretty good actually, collectively. But one thing, uh, I, I think uh, some of the research or some of the news, they say older generation, they are much vulnerable to this uh, COVID-19. Uh, the virus. Well, obviously, it's a very obvious thing that older generation, uh, older people, they have like uh, for their age, for their suppressed immune, uh, I mean, like um, their collapsed immune response. It may, it should have. It's actually having like very uh, like a hard effect to them. But in our country, um, I I have no idea about the strain right now because the uh, RNA or the uh, or the sequence analysis is. Not done yet, but uh, from some of the research, I can uh, talk about um, say one of the name, uh, Dr. Musaget Nayuk, uh, is assistant professor uh, of Dhaka University. He's, he he had done his research in Oxford as well. Uh, 
over. So uh, from uh, I can quote, uh, quote him. So uh, this uh, specific strain in our country is changed. It's really changed. It's changed from um, uh, from other countries and it, even uh, Italy and the United States. They have regional chain. Uh, I mean differences between the various strains. So um, so here in our country, we actually uh, have. Uh, there are like reported deaths of uh, young adults, like 30 to 45, mm. right? So there is no way we should, we, we don't have any chance to be careless about it. We can just go out and like be careless, uh, um, just careless that we are young or not. Um, in our country, the death threat is not, uh, it's like, I mean, it's not manageable uh, like uh, other, uh, like Spain, or Italy, because they have had like better recovery rate uh, than the death rate. But in our country, death rate is like uh, equal or better, uh, like uh, bigger than the recovery rate. So we have to be careful about it. So this is a very common. Uh, I mean, this is a news where in portal that young people are not vulnerable. But I must say, we have to be careful about it. All right. Um, I mean, obviously, I understand. I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of our young generation actually go out still now after you know being under lockdown or even being under quarantine we're still going out uh, I think yes it's a very important thing to understand that none of us are safe from it I mean if every one of us are equally you know the probability is equal for all of us to get affected I understand that so um so I think one of the uh, last questions from my end would be that even though the situation is really bad and you know, like the number of deaths around the world is a lot. I mean, if you compare to in comparison to the recovery rate, uh, the death rates are a lot. And we understand that. But at the same time, do you think are there any pros to this situation? I mean, is should this be a lesson for us or the governments of different countries or even the health sectors? Uh, should this come as a lesson or are there any pros? Well, uh, it would be uh, people, people can defer me <laughs> like they have. Uh, they can uh, well. So I would like to mention the world wars, World War One and World War Two. Uh, as you can see, there's like huge technological advancement after these wars, right? And all the technologies we are having nowadays, uh, actually, mo most of them are uh, the result of consequences of the research done during the wars. So we can say this pandemic mm -hmm. is another war for us. So so many, as you can see, the ventilators, uh, one of the medical uh, device. People are making everywhere in the world. Even in our country, like 30 to 40 groups, they have made this ventilator in one week, right? So, but before this situation, we never even thought that we have to uh, create or build this kind of devices. So this is an example. So the pros should be, uh, I mean, I would like to mention some of the points. Number one, agriculture. I think there is a high time to focus on our agriculture because in our country, uh, since, uh, we, have, we actually have a chance with agriculture uh, to like uh, uh, imp export the product and also as I, as I said before like software and hardware for the future economic maybe we can focus on banking e-commerce and skill manpower for future markets and also we have to think about the nutrition because this can affect highly in food production and nutrition value that may affect in our mental and cognitive um, you know uh, in our next generation's cognitive uh, settlement or like structure, uh, so there are the sectors. There, these are the problems. And when there is a problem, uh, we have a chance to work on that. I mean, the solution it could be a business. The solution could be a scope of generating money because uh, the business money transaction and the money circulation. Right? These these are the things that will keep our economic running. So. Uh, th this, these are some of the things we uh, problems would be coming out from this situation, and we will have uh, we have to build uh, separate and those specified uh, business sectors uh, for us and also for the country, and also um, we have to uh, like uh, we now the pros another pros in the health sector uh, as we can uh, we we have this uh, experience. We saw the panic shopping, high side uh, mistreatment of the um, patients, the healthcare personnel, 
hiding uh, what the what, what consequences can have from this hiding the symptoms and uh, Mr. Salman, could you repeat of, that? Uh, the internet went a little off, so you'll probably have to repeat that line. Well, so well uh, after well. So uh, another thing, uh, the pros can be we uh, the solutions can lead us to uh, new business and uh, mm -hmm. new um, scope of like generating money. And uh, yeah, some of the years will go very dry, but um, we got to know what kind of consequences can have this situation. Like they led to, uh, we, we got this experience of panic shopping, price hike, mit, uh, mistreatment of uh, patients and doctors or mm -hmm. healthcare personnel and uh, what are the consequences of hiding disease symptoms and test results. So mm -hmm. from this experience, actually we can have policies about these things. And we can think about our next business steps uh, dip, uh, depending on the mistreatment and the uh, uh, misarrangement of this situation. So these are the problems we, we uh, got to know. Uh, and, uh, and another thing uh, that I, I have to uh, those are like interests of my uh, my my own interest. That is uh, uh, paper money. I think this is a time that we have to think about the uh, value of paper money. I think transaction internet banking. Uh, we have to create a very good sector and a very um, foolproof sector of internet banking. It we we can. Uh, this is a chance to. Uh, train our people in blockchain. This is a, a cryptocurrency and everything. And also, uh, language, as I said, like quantum computing, it will come up to make the software and hardware integration um, life and uh, automated industry like bring together more connected, uh, new efficient, uh, sorry, uh, software and hardware integration uh, automation industry will come up. And education. Uh, this is having a very good, I mean, like very, um, this is a very good reason to think about our education system because the gap year, dropout, international studies, research fund, they are like cutting down. So we, we have to think, uh, we have a scope to think about our education system, like make it more, um, I mean, what do you call it? Like more sustainable, more equipped and enforced to uh, make our students. Uh, skill for uh, next generation jobs um, and uh, new education system or curriculum can be pushed uh, for biological uh, equipment development, agriculture and cultivation technologies. Because after a while, we, we just got to know that we need, we need food, we need medical, uh, I mean like treatment facilities, uh, and we need mental peace. So this pandemic actually taught us these things. We forget about all the other things like traveling and everything, but food, treatment, and mental peace. These are the very vital and important things we have to think about. Uh, and if our country have this opportunity to monetize those sectors, maybe we should focus on that. Uh, so right. what I want to say is like, uh, don't like lose hope. This is a war. Uh, we, we still have some weapons or sectors to weaponize our skills and our um, expertise and our resources in our country. Maybe our this generation uh, can have a chance on that. Maybe we can work on that to be, build a foolproof plan for the next things. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Salman. I think we will have to take questions from the viewers. Uh, I think one of the first questions we have here is uh, from Rehnuma Hokthiti uh, from Bangladesh University of Professionals. Um, she has asked that what would be your suggestion on how the medical system should be more organized and efficient in medical equipment such as PPE, ventilators, uh, oxygen facilities, which organizations should be more alert about these? Uh, so I think she's asking what are your suggestions to actually have these sort of resources to be more efficient and organized? Uh, it's a very uh, good question because uh, there are so many organizations, initiatives, they are producing PPE and some other uh, devices and like, like the products you have mentioned here. But not only these things, and also with the food and other uh, uh, you know, facilities, but we need to have a central organizing committee that can be, that can distribute like, uh, first of all, we need to have a database, a proper database system, uh, so that we can identify 
um, the requirement of different sectors or different zones. After that, this distributed committee, um, it should be governed by the government and at least by the Ward Council or some of the authorities. Um, so they are, uh, depending on the data and according to the data, according to the requirement, uh, this uh, resources should be uh, distributed. So this is the um, top, I mean like the top line and the headline, but uh, if uh, we want to like elaborate it, it, there are like so many things we can talk about, but uh, more, more or less these are things, like we need to have a centralized distributed system under government. All right. Uh, I think, okay, so we'll move to the second question, which is given by Fahima Rahman. Uh, she's asked that if it is possible to make cheaper equipments for the health sector so that the government can afford it and the patients can afford it to pay, afford to pay for them as well. Do you think these uh, equipments that we're talking about during the COVID-19, can it be made any cheaper so that, you know, uh, private hospitals can also afford them and they can actually give them to, uh, you know, the mass population? Right. So yeah, actually, uh, many of the initiatives, they have been working on this and we have developed some of the cheaper technology equipment uh, for COVID-19 patients and also uh, the, the doctors. And even my company, MechaMind, we, we, we have been working on um, ventilators that's like uh, 15 to uh, 20,000 taka and also like PPE, face shield and everything under 10 taka. But uh, I must say, it is like easy to make the devices if you have the resources and the components available. But in our country, all even government labs and they are having a very difficulty to, you know, uh, gather the components because most of the components were uh, imported from China, India, and India had a ban on medical uh, devices and components. And also, you know, this is a very, it's not a good time to bring like before, but still um, now many of the ports are opening, many of the custom uh, rules are getting, uh, you know, uh, easier to, so that we can bring uh, the devices. So maybe in the near future, as I said, uh, if we can have the industry, if we can monetize these things, um, we have a chance because we have the expertise. That way, what I can say is we have this expertise to make um, devices like that in our country. Uh, but what we need, just uh, resources. Yeah. So there's a All right. Uh, okay. So uh, I think we will move to the last question from the viewer. Uh, it's right. from Farhat Subha Rodoshi, and she asks, uh, like, what do you think about the possibility of using viruses as biological weapons? Is this regard in this regard, what kind of safety measures or policies must be taken while uh, experimenting with viruses from your point of view? Yeah. So this is the question people have been asking so many experts in WHO as well, but. Yeah, uh, this is an international question. It's a question of international politics. It's a question of capitalism. It's connected to capitalism and international politics, but um, we don't have to explain it here. But uh, yeah, as a country like us, as a country like Bangladesh, um, we what we can do. Uh, we have actually we have we have been talking about this in our previous questions: the medical equipment, uh, the education, the treatment measures or the predictive analysis and what we can uh, have beforehand to uh, keep our economy intact if we are like infected by any, any sort of things, uh, infected by capitalism or infected by virus, uh, we have to have like plan B or plan C to uh, save our economy because the first, uh, but about this uh, biological weapon, this is, this is like a very controversial issue, uh, but there's always a chance to use uh, a virus or bacteria um, to use a biological, a biological weapon. But from our point of view, I want to mention one thing. Uh, this virus actually has changed um, this the biological construct, the sequence, I mean like uh, more than 300, 400 times. So I'm, I'm thinking you are a doctor or you are a researcher, you have created this vi virus like uh, changing or like uh, engine by engineering some of the sequence, but there is a very less chance to keep it stable in the environment because if you like, uh, I mean, uh, take it out, in the, uh, maybe it can change. It it cannot be. It may not be the uh, engineered virus you just put it in your lab. So you can actually blame some company the, because um, I mean there is always chance to. I mean, change its uh, genetic makeup. So 
is still a very debatable issue is a weapon or not uh, let's like think uh, what we can do uh, to get our, ourselves out of the situation um, yeah okay thank you very much mr salman i think with this we'll have to end our episode two of afac thank you all the viewers for tuning in and for asking your questions we'll meet you soon on the 29th with yet another expert and thank you mr salman for giving us your time uh, we hope you have a good quarantine and then we hope to see you in good health thank you so much thank you so much for opportunity thank you so much yes. for all the viewers yeah so all i right. think uh, we're setting up right all right Thank you viewers, we will see you soon.